First and foremost, I want to address this whole Tory Lane situation. All right. I want to address the whole Tory Lane situation. And the reason why it's important for me to address the Tory Lane situation is because I think that this is a travesty. I think that this is absolutely a travesty. I do. I think it is very unfortunate that you guys don't see what is on the horizon. You guys don't see what's on the horizon. You guys don't see what's happening. Listen, for decades, for decades, they have incentivized you guys. And I'm not even going to just put it on black women tonight. I'm going to put it on everybody. But they have incentivized you guys to go against the thing that is best for you. For the men, they have incentivized you guys to embrace this trash ass culture and you don't even see it. You can't see it for the life of you. For the women, they've incentivized you guys to step outside of your purpose and you don't see it. You can't see it for the life of you. And so I'm going to use three examples specifically. Now, I don't have a script. All I know is what it is that I put in the title. All I know is what my thoughts are. I'm like a rapper that don't write their lyrics down except for I do it from a content creation perspective. And I know what I feel and all I know is how to be able to communicate it effectively. So if I write it down or I start to write notes, you're going to get a, a watered down version of what it is that we talking about on a regular basis. And so whether it's the Millionaire Morning Show or whether it's what it is that we talking about right here on this platform, I don't write anything down. All I do is put what I want to talk about inside of the title and then I give my thoughts. It's 100 percent authentic. We different over here. And, but I'm going to give you three things. Three specific things and examples, and then I'm going to deep dive into it to help you understand exactly why it is that you're being incentivized to do, to do the thing that's not in your best interest. All right, let's start with Tory Lanez, because you're so fucking distracted that you have no clue what just happened. You think that this is a Tory Lanez versus Meg the Stallion situation. It never was. You think that this is a men versus women conversation. It's not. You think that this is a gender war that's being implemented right now, and that's just a small part of the end game. The end game ain't even here yet. The end game is, is yet to come. Let's talk about it for a minute. So, of course, we know that Believe All Women is bullshit, because if it wasn't, then we wouldn't have Carly Russell sitting here getting prosecuted by Alabama, right? And then they diverted your attention by highlighting and championing the dumbest shit that I've ever seen in my life, and that was the Montgomery, Alabama brawl. And you were so distracted that you couldn't even see what it was that they were putting in front of you, and they were giving you the blueprint of how it was that they was going to play this thing out whenever something important happens. You can't see that the gender problem that we have and that we have women divesting themselves against the thing that's best for them is really just a small piece of a larger play that's really being implemented and, and taken out right in front of your eyes. And now that they actually showed you the playbook, you ignore it because you don't like to be uncomfortable with what the truth is. So let me break it down for you. Tory Lanez was sentenced to 10 years. Never mind the fact that we all know that there are situations where people do much, much, much more egregious shit and get much, much less time. Way more egregious stuff and much less time. But the cherry on top was the fact that she went on this whole tour of basically the court of public opinion, which you guys are now the mob. You are the mob. And you know who's leading the mob? Women. It's the reason why you guys felt so comfortable supporting Derrick Jackson, even though he sold you a crock of bullshit and all of the men was holding up the banner in front of you and saying, open your eyes, ladies, women, black women specifically, open your eyes. And you was like, hell no, this man is making me feel good and he got muscles and he got muscles. So I'm going to believe him. And then we was like, OK, you ready to see now? And then when you opened your eyes, you didn't like the way it looked, so you went over into the next person, right? 
You got all of these other people that's continuing to sell you dreams. They keep telling you they're going to build you schools and that it's all black men's fault, even though 80% of the women that have children out of wedlock is having them with less than 20% of the men. And they tell you that all black men are bad and that there's none available and we're all in jail and we don't take care of our kids. And that's the biggest fucking crock of bullshit that I've ever heard in my life. It's not that we're not available. It's just that you can't see us because the places that you're congregating in and the places that you're looking to attract a man is not the places that we like to go to. We don't find ourselves in the club. We're not fucking rappers. We got more money than rappers, but we're not rappers. We take care of our children. We take care of our mother, right? We have conversations amongst each other, and we spend time continuing to build each other up. We are not in the streets. We're not holding up liquor stores like we on a fucking movie in Boys in the Hood. We're not gang banging, and we're not doing none of that shit. That is a small portion of the population that is being sold to you and as a result you keep opening your legs up to the ones that's worse for you. you're no different than meg the stallion meg the stallion found herself in a space where she was competing for a man that she never should have been with in the first place and then she had a sexual relationship with him outside of marriage she regretted it because when it started to come to the light we didn't want to focus on the character of the person that then was with tory lanes in the first place in order to establish whether or not she was even supposed to be a credible person and the thing that she was accusing him of in the first place, we didn't, we ignored the fact that she went on Gail King and she said, <laughs> did I have a sexual relationship with him? <laughs> Absolutely not. And we seen these fake fucking tears fall down her eyes. And then when she got on the stand, we knew that Tori was busting it open. Busting it open. And then Tori got online and he went on a live stream and he said, hey, listen. Rock Nation called me and said that if I continue to defend myself publicly, it wasn't going to be in my best interest. Then we found out later that one of the caveats that was uh, one of the main things that gave him 10 years in which he wasn't even supposed to get 10 years. But one of the one of the driving forces that gave him 10 years. And remember, this is not whether he's guilty or innocent. None of that fucking matters. It's the details. The devil is in the details. Do you know that one of the factors allegedly that, that went into whether or not he was going to get as much time as he wound up getting was the fact that he did defend himself in a court of public opinion? Did you know that? Did you know that one of the factors also came along with it was the fact that he was still coddling and simping for her, saying that he still had love for her? That he made a whole fucking album defending himself? The fact that he decided to stand up for himself and go to trial because he felt like he was not going to be convicted in a court of public opinion and he believed in the justice system and that women ultimately wouldn't be the ones that turned against him this long and this much. And so if you defend yourself, think about it. If you decide to defend yourself because you truly don't believe that you should be in prison, you're going to get more time. You wasted my fucking time, you're getting more time. Now, what kind of justice system is that to where if I don't believe that I'm guilty, but I waste your fucking time as though I'm not going to be the one rotten in prison, then I get more time for actually standing up for myself and having a conversation for presenting my case. And I'm going to be given more time based off of how you fucking feel inside of the courtroom. That is the way in which is going to determine whether or not I get more years and I'm going to be taken away from my son. What kind of bullshit is that? 